Amen. One more time, let's give him the praise this morning. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. All right, shake somebody before you sit down. Shake somebody. Give them a hug if they allow you to. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to round up the teaching on university today. Praise God. I mean, if I've enjoyed this series so far. Praise God. How many people got their t-shirts? Praise God. All right, this shows how much people cooperate with what we're doing in church. Some people just wore anything they like. <laughs> Praise God. Typical Nigerian behavior. All right. Those of you that don't always flow with what we do in church, you need to learn to flow with the house sometimes, all right? I'm not talking about people that are new people. Maybe you just came this month. You don't know us. You don't like us. I'm talking about people that are regular attenders. If you make it a habit to disobey instructions and to go against what has been done in the house, one day you'll miss out on something God has for you. There's a reason God planted you in a house. If he wanted you solo, he, you will be doing church in your house. Mm. We are useless except we are unified. Our strength is in our unity, not in our numbers. If you have 10,000 people that are not unified, they are useless. They are all pursuing their own division. They are useless. If you have 10 people that are unified, you know what God said about people that are unified? He said nothing will be impossible to them that they have planned to do. DJ, bring the scripture up. I think my message today has even changed. Because it makes us weak as a house. He said the kingdom divided against itself. Understand? Look at this guy. He said, this is Genesis 11. These guys came together. They said they want to build a tower and a house that will get to heaven. <laughs> now, of course, um, they didn't mean we'll get to where God is. What they meant was that they were going to build something phenomenally high, you know. Maybe like the tallest building in the world kind of thing, that time that there was even no technology. These guys wanted to do it. And, um, no, start from this. Let's read the story. The, the message has changed. This, this is what I'm teaching today. The whole uh, world had one language, and uh, it, that's the beginning, okay, and a common speech. Next verse. It says, as the people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shina and settled there. Continue. It said, they said to each other, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for what? Mortar. Next verse. Said, then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. You see, this was the real problem. It wasn't their project. God had no problem with their project. Because today people have skyscrapers. He said, but let's make a name for ourselves so that we'll make a name for ourselves so that otherwise we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Next verse. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people were building. Next verse. He said, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Give me another version of this verse. He said, God took one look and said, one people, one language. He said, why? This is only a first step. No telling what they will come up with next. They will stop at nothing. Give me King James. Give me King James. And the Lord said, behold, the people is what? One. And they all have what? One language. Meaning they are all saying the same thing. The people is one. And God said, this is what there's nothing they can't do. You see, no reference to their number. The reference was that they were one. He said they can, they can achieve anything. They can achieve anything. They can achieve anything. Once people come together as one, they can achieve anything. It doesn't matter their number. If they are 10,000 and they are not one, they will achieve nothing. If they are 10 and they are one, they will achieve something. So don't make it a habit um, to be in a church and not follow what we're doing. You are weakening us. You are weakening us. 
we are useless except we are unified. We are useless except we are unified. Haven't you noticed that the best time in Nigeria is when we are playing football? We are all unified at that time. We have one goal. What's the one goal? To win. So nobody cares your tribe at that time. Nobody cares your tribe. After that, we just start talking rubbish again. So why did they put this minister from so-and-so place? What of my own place? <laughs> Straight. But when we are free football, we are all one language, you are all praying, no matter your religion, pray. Pray your religion, pray for us to win. So that's why sports is one of the areas we have done best the most. Those days, sure, but now, well, but those days, we were winning gold, we were, we were, we were going fine, World Cup, because we were one. We didn't care who, who was on the team and who was scoring. We are useless, except we are what? Unified. Our strength is in our unity. Ten people that have one mind can shake a whole town. Ten thousand people that are all chasing their private agenda are useless. Their number don't count. Number don't count. Come on, tell anybody, are you hearing? So, when you make it a habit to just block your ears... When something is going on in church, you are weakening the house and weakening the team. Okay, let me catch up on some of the things on university. I'll end with the five things that can make you happy. I'll run through it quickly as fast as I can. Number one, managing what you want versus what you need. Managing what you want versus what you need. If you're going to live a happy life, you're going to be a happy person, you must be able to draw the line between what you want and what you need. What, does, what do I mean by this? I mean, like I said throughout the teaching, the natural tendency is for you to go for what will make you happy short term. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you pick your phone, you want to go for entertainment uh, material. You go to Instagram, you go to social media, you just want to get a breast of what is happening. That's what you want but that's not what you need. What you need that morning when you wake up is to refresh your soul. That will give you a better standing to deal with the issues of the day. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? The natural tendency is for you to sleep till almost the time you need to wake up and move out. So if you are going to work, even if you leave 5 a.m., you wake up 4.30, quickly have your bath and just jump on the road. No time to pray or no time to do any other thing that would develop you. That's the tendency. You slept too long. If you are going at 5 a.m., it means you can't sleep till 5 a.m. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Most people don't go for enlightenment. They go for entertainment. Everybody has 24 hours. If you are not getting smarter than you used to be, it means you are, you are, you are feeding on wrong, the wrong materials. Every day you should be getting wiser and smarter, more intelligent, more exposed. And the internet is available today. There is material for anything. You can become intelligent in any area. But most people spend the bulk of their time on what they want, which is entertainment. Entertainment, entertainment. They don't focus on edification and enlightenment. That one builds you up. They don't focus on that. So first step, separate what you want and what you need. Second step to living a life of happiness, learning self-control. Learning self-control. <laughs> you have a choice between no control and self-control. You have a choice between what? No control and what? Self-control. The normal slogan people have is do whatever makes you happy. Better don't take that advice, sir. That's a very bad advice. Do whatever makes you happy. <laughs> what they won't tell you is that the thing that will make you happy now can cause you big problem in the future. Do whatever makes you happy. If you're already above 40, hope you know you can't eat anything you like. Do whatever makes you happy. 
If you're above 40, you can't eat anything you like. If you're above 40, you can't afford not to be doing exercises. You can't drink anything you like. You can't smoke anything you like. They have repercussions that you won't like. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying, sir? So, no control versus self-control. Our natural tendency is to binge on things we like. Do whatever you like. Drink whatever you like. Eat whatever you like. Listen, the way life is structured, when you control yourself as regarding most things, you'll be happier for longer. I gave the example about um, your best food. If, if um, jollof rice is your best food, if you eat it morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night for three days, you will get tired of it. If you eat it once a week, you will get great pleasure from it. If you eat it once a month, you will get more pleasure from it. So self-control actually brings you more happiness than no control. No control. I'm attracted to somebody. No control says... Start sleeping together. No control says moving to his house before marriage. No control says fornication is not bad. We are planning to marry. No control says even though he's married or she's married, I'm in love. That's no control. Self-control knows that there are boundaries. God put boundaries not to limit us but to safeguard us. The boundaries on the road... In, 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 most, in most reasonable countries, they have where pedestrians should walk <laughs> and where cars should take. Am I correct? The boundaries there is not to hinder your life. The boundaries there is to what? Save your life. When God puts boundaries in our lives, it's not because he's a dry person. He wants you to be uh, um, sad. He's telling you that, look, without these boundaries, you will self-destruct. You will kill yourself. The boundaries help you. Somebody get what I'm saying? He said, don't remove the ancient landmarks which our fathers have put. They say, don't remove the boundaries. The boundaries are important. They are to help you, not to stop you. No control versus self-control. The world will tell you, do whatever makes you happy. Do whatever you like. You don't have to control anything. God will tell you. You know, we, did, we said last week that wisdom of God is the secret to happiness. God will tell you you must be controlled about everything. Controlled about what you eat. Controlled about how you act. Controlled about what you say. Controlled about how you treat people. Controlled about sex. Controlled about money. And every other thing. Number what? Three. Self-centeredness and selflessness. Self-centeredness and selflessness. <laughs> the way the world will tell you is that, hey, look out for yourself. They say, heaven help those who help themselves. By the way, that thing is not in the Bible, okay? <laughs> Don't let anybody make you feel it's in the Bible. The world, generally, we paint a picture that, hey, you must take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. And that's what everybody does. But do you know, sir, you get no joy from focusing on yourself. This is the reason why many people are depressed in this life. They are trying. I've yet to see somebody depressed because of other people's problems. Most people depressed is they are tired of their own life. Focusing on your life is not what you are even created to do at all. That's why it never makes you happy. On the short run, it might look like, oh, you are buying all the things you like. But those things will not give you joy. They can't give you happiness. Selfishness is our first tendency, but it does not bring happiness. Selflessness. Way better. Has longer lasting effect than selfishness and self-centeredness. When you are too focused on self, you over-magnify yourself 
you are too important. Everything is about you. The world revolves around you. And that destroys. Number what? Number four. <laughs> worrying versus resting. Worrying versus what? Resting. A lot of people are anxious today because they are bothered about many things. You know what the Bible says? <laughs> this one will annoy somebody now. Get ready. It will annoy you, but it will shock you. Even though you've heard it before. You know what the Bible says? It says, take no thought for your life. Do you understand? He said, take no thought for your life. Did you bring it up? Don't worry about your life. Why are you anxious? You know why you're anxious? Every time you're anxious, every time you're worried, you know what you're doing? You're trying to be responsible for your own life. That's what, that's what's making you upset and anxious. Hey, how will tomorrow be? Hey, my children, when I die, what will they be doing? What concern you? <laughs> he said, look at this. Therefore, I say unto you, do what? Don't think of your life. Exactly what most people don't want to do. He said, don't think of your life. Now, this is the wisdom of God. I know your flesh will say differently. The people around you are saying differently. Worry about yourself. If you don't worry about yourself, we worry about you. Worry about yourself. That's what they want to tell you. <laughs> but the wisdom of God is smarter than those people. Those people are here for the first time. They have not lived that long. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what, shall, what you shall put on. He said, life is more than meat. Life is more than just eating, eating, eating. Take no thought for your life. Don't worry. Don't worry. Cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Praise God. Most of his anxiety come from worry, 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 worry. I want my children to go to university from primary four. So that they can be fast. Fast to where? Where are, you, where are they going? You don't know where they're going. You have no clue where they're going. Take no thought for your life. I'm not married. I'm not married. Relax. Relax. Somebody sent me, you know, I can't say move from all over the world. Somebody sent me a mail that she's 23 and she's not married. She said, all her mates are married. Should I tell her? 23. <laughs> I'm just laughing. 23. All your mates are married. You have no clue. How many 33 are waiting? <laughs> you are 23. You are panicking. You see, and this, this goes to show you that anxiety has nothing to do with reality. A lot of things you are worrying about now, in a few years from now, you wonder why you were worrying about it then. You're worrying for no reason because your worry has not added. See, see the reason why your worry doesn't make sense? See, it doesn't add a cubit of flesh to you. It doesn't, it may, it, you understand? Whether you sleep through this problem or you worry through it, it makes no difference. So why are you stressing yourself? In fact, your worry will even stop you from getting the creativity and ideas to solve the issue. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. This is why you say you can't worry. Take no thought for it. You're worried. Now, that girl, if she's going to marry at 25 or at 35, if she worries from 23, to that time, it's just a long worry for no reason. It might affect her health. It might even limit, stop her from marrying. Because she'll be too anxious. By the time she meets the wrong person, she'll just jump on that one. Meanwhile, the real one is on behind. There are many people like that. They've entered one relationship, the real person now comes. And say, oh, you're in a relationship. Say, we are close, intimate, real friends that <laughs> talk every day. <laughs> Why? Don't worry. Jesus was on a boat that was, that was, there was a storm. He was sleeping in the boat. He was sleeping. And they say, oh, you master, you care not that we perish. Oh, you have little faith. Why do you think you perish? I told you you were going to the other side. Don't let this temporary storm threaten you. We're not perishing. We're going to the other side. Hallelujah. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought. Many people are not living their life. They are worrying through life for every single small thing. That anxiety will not allow you to receive from God because God can't reach you. You are you're already doing your own style, doing your own way to the solution instead of relaxing and resting in him 
let him do it. Say, be still and know that I am God. He needs you to be relaxed. So those that believe, they do not make haste. They are not anxious. They are not anxious. Hallelujah. Whew. Take no thought for your life. 23. <laughs> First of all, statistically, sir, people that marry very early, 20 to, um, let's say um, 23 down, for instance, statistically, they usually end up divorced quick more. So when God is delaying you sometimes, you need to trust God's timing. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You need to trust God's timing. What would you rather, to marry at 22 and be divorced at 28 with many beatings going on? Statistically, many people that marry that age. Now, and I, and I'm telling you this, I, I've done this job for 20-something years, so I'm not just telling you something I'm guessing. This is stats that exist. I also have confirmed it in my own years of counseling. When people marry too early, they usually marry wrong. Because they are not yet developed enough to understand what the commitment they are about to enter is about. They don't yet know what they are. Because they, see, see her reason. Say all our mates are married. Those are the things that influence you at that young age. You are very into what everybody is doing. As you start growing old, you discover that your lane is your lane. You're little on your lane. When you're that young, once you what everybody's doing, you know that's how children are. Everybody's wearing this kind of dress. You two want to wear. As you start growing old, you know your body is not their body. Some things that fit them can't fit you. As you grow old, you become smart sometimes. Know that you are in an individual lane. Somebody gets what I'm saying. So you want to, those people, I've, I've done this research over and over in my counseling. People that married those early, especially ladies that married at 20, 22, they, they just marry to run away from home. Most of them come back home. Most do. Go and check. Or the ones that stay, they are not happy in the marriage because they feel they married the wrong person. They feel they married wrongly. So they're either having boyfriends even though they are married or they are frustrated in the marriage that they are in, planning a way out. So relax. Don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. So if there's anything causing you anxiety, just pray about it. Really committed to God and say, hey, Lord, I'm bothered about so-and-so, and I want to bring it to you. And when you bring it to God, you hand it over to God. Not that you, if you come every day and remind him. God doesn't forget. Yeah, he doesn't have a remembrance problem because people think you, are, you, you think you are smarter than God. You have to remind him. God, I care. It's me, oh. As I, as I have, this week, I have not seen anybody. So I start to come and just, in case you are busy, you know your schedule is busy. I came to remind you. You see, when you pray like that and talk like that, it shows you you didn't even believe the first time you dropped the problem. So he says, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. And he said, the peace of God. Look at this. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. See the next verse. Next verse, guys. It says, and what will happen? Peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind. Because your heart and mind wants to panic. But every time you come to God in prayer, he puts a deposit of peace inside of you. And that peace is a supernatural peace. It's not natural, not natural one. It's not peace of mind. It's a supernatural peace, okay? It's this peace. Say, it passes all understanding. So this peace can make you be peaceful even when there's trouble around you. You're just peaceful. It's something God gives you. It's not peace of mind. Supernatural peace in your heart. It guards your heart and mind. All right. Number what are we in? Five. I have two more. I'm trying to manage my time. Purpose versus profit. Purpose versus what? Profit. The way we are structured in this life, everybody lives for money. That's how we are structured. How much do they pay you? Abby? Wait till you gain. That's what we are. We are all wired to think, but that's not how God works. God wants you to first live for purpose. Living for purpose is a higher way to live than for profit. God knows you need profit. Don't get me wrong. But he's saying, look, I want to bless you double. When you work in purpose, you get paid twice. 
When you walk in purpose, you get paid what? Twice. So you get paid the money, but you get one aspect that people can't, most people can't get. That is the fulfillment of doing what you were created by God to do. Fulfillment is tied to that one. And many people don't have it. And there's nothing as miserable as working for only money. This means you are a slave to money. And money is a bad slave master. Money is a good servant, but it's a bad master. Money is a good servant if you are the one sending it on errand. But if it's the one controlling you, it will deal with you. Many girls don't even know that they are prostitutes already. They don't even know. <laughs> you are just operating from home. You are a prostitute. You don't even know. Because you started small, small. So that's much more from chicken. Buy me chicken. When you see girls saying, I can't marry a poor man, that's, you're already a slave to money. So anybody that has money is, is eligible. So if a monkey now has money, if somebody leave money for, monkey, money for a monkey now, he can join line. Because that's your criteria. They must have money. You're, money is a bad master. The things people would do for money. The things people do for money. Purpose versus profit. Like I said, I'm not saying you don't need profit. I'm not saying you should even, you know, make wise decisions to earn more money in your life. That's great. But you must also seek to find why you were put on this earth. Sometimes your day job is not your purpose. There are people that are blessed that their day job is their purpose also. So that's great. Some other people, you must understand that your day job is just something you do to pay your bills. But you must still seek to express the reason why you were created. Because that reason why you were created, there's a dimension of happiness you can never get except you express it. Do you know how it feels when you, you actually use what you were given by God? You actually express your gift and people are blessed by it? You can't even understand. People that sing, you understand what I'm talking about? When you sing and somebody's life is actually changed because of something you were created, that expression I mean, that joy and happiness cannot be quantified. No amount of money can take it. And that will make you live longer than any amount of money. You can earn a salary and be grumbling and be angry throughout the month. And this is how some people live. They are going to work every day. They are upset. They are just mumbling. This man go shout now. They don't say my guy. You would die early that way. That's hypertension building up. That's why hypertension is tension that has become hyper. You don't know. That's high, that's high blood pressure. Statistically, they said more people get heart attacks on Sunday night because they are thinking of tomorrow is work. <laughs> so if you are not blessed enough to be doing your, for your day job to be your purpose, then as you are doing your day job to pay your bills, which is okay, still find what exactly God wants you to do. And your purpose can be anything. There's no limit to what it can be. For somebody like me, my purpose is uh, being a pastor. My gifts is being a teacher. I enjoy teaching because it's tied to my purpose of pastoring. It's what I'm created to do. One day I was on a plane. I told them during the week I was on a plane, and I, there was a woman that didn't know how to open the toilet of the plane, an elderly woman. So I showed her how to open the toilet of the plane and how to lock it. I felt so good because I love teaching. I like when I bring people to a higher level of knowledge. So I, I felt so good. I was able to, you just show, that, that, see, when is your gift? You, you can do it for free. You love to do it. You don't, you don't need money to motivate you. You love to do it. So find what else is your gift in case it's not your day job. There's something else you would love to do. It might be serving people. Because every human being has a desire to contribute something meaningful with their life. Every human being is inside you somewhere. A desire to, be, to do something meaningful beyond you. Beyond just bread and butter, eat, cholesterol, eat. There's something inside you yearning for expression beyond eating. But fortunately, you, you are blinding that one. You are focusing on eating, eating. And there's no amount of eating you can do in this world that can bring you up. What can you eat that we have not eaten? What can you do? How many cars can you drive? How many houses can you sleep in? You are limited. Somebody get what I'm saying? Some of you, your purpose can be serving another person. Because some people, when they hear purpose, they think it must mean I must do something, I must start. So, no. Some of you, your purpose is just assisting. That's where your purpose is. That's where you find the highest fulfillment. Aaron's purpose was supporting Moses. That's it. 
you must not go and start your own company or you must not go and start your own um, fellowship or whatever. It doesn't follow. Many people, your purpose will be to serve other people. That's where your purpose is, to serve somebody. If you are the PA of somebody doing something, that can be your purpose, assisting somebody to achieve something greater. Because we live in a world where nobody wants to do small, in quotes, seemingly small jobs. Because we are all attracted to the main person we see on the stage. This house can be effective without many, many, many people doing many, many things to make it work. But it's me everybody focuses on most of the time, so they think I'm the star. No, I'm not. There are many people making things happen. I contribute nothing to the music. I don't know anything about the music. There are people making that happen. I don't know anything about this sound, these speakers, how they are connected. There are many people making it happen. There are many other aspects. Somebody getting what I'm saying? There's a purpose inside you. There's no useless person. There's no purposeless person. Don't confuse your career with your purpose. There's something unique you can do for the kingdom. And that takes me to my last point. Giving versus keeping. Giving versus what? Keeping. <laughs> See what the Bible says. It says it is more blessed to give than to keep. <laughs> Wisdom of God. It says it is more blessed to give than to what? Keep. See it here. Acts 20.35. He said, I've showed you all things, how that in so laboring you ought, to, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this Jesus has said this. How he said, it is more what? Blessed to what? Give than to what? Receive. Giving versus keeping. Vis- giving versus receiving. Can you give me the amplified version of that, of that scripture? DJ, give me an amplified of that scripture. It says, in everything I showed you, by, ex- by example, that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he himself said, it is more what? Blessed. And what? Happiness. Brings greater joy to give than to what? Receive. Giving versus receiving. Your fleshly, selfish side wants to keep receiving. It thinks it will be happier by receiving, but the wisdom of God said, no, you will actually be happier by giving. You will get more blessed. Because for everything you give, you will get the joy of giving, you will get the joy of changing somebody's life, you also get the joy of receiving it back. Because God will not owe you, he will still bless you back. So in other words, the thing in your hand can be greater when it's given than when it's eaten. When it's eaten, it goes to the toilet. When it's given, it ginger jobs a harvest that keeps increasing. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Giving. Giving. I'm going to challenge us to give today. We must. I, even for me to drive in here today was, was a long story because of how the cars are. We're, we're getting pressed to move out of this place. I know some of you don't, kingdom things don't bother you. You just want to focus on yourself. That, that's an unhappy way to live. And I'm not saying this just for saying sake. It's what the Bible says. You can't live for yourself. Sacrificing for the things of God is how to live. Sacrifice might look painful on the short run. But on the, on the long run, you'll be happy that you did. Next Sunday, I'm going to show you a video or a picture of what our church venue used to be many years ago. Because in somebody's mind, they're thinking, oh, do we need another venue? I will show you what it used to be. If people at that time said that, you, you won't be here. I will show you the picture. It was a small kiosk. If all of us that time in that kiosk said we are all happy, 
do we need another place? We will not be here. So don't let the devil tell you, do we need another place? Let's just stay here. Nah. We still have more people to reach. I get what I'm saying. And we will not stop. The work of the kingdom must keep expanding. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And what happens most times is that because many people don't buy into what the church is doing, it becomes strenuous for the few that are trying to do it. That's why I started with the t-shirt thing. For me, it just shows how much people follow what we are saying. So people just come to church and they don't even listen, they don't care. That's not how to live. That's not how to live. Oh, oh you, you're waiting for God to appear here. Ooh, your own video is disturbing you. Because I think what you're waiting for is for God to... Ooh, 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 in white bed sheets. Maybe I'll do that next Sunday. Maybe I'll do it next Sunday. That's how some of you hear what I'm saying. My son, 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 son. And daughter, 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 daughter. Obey, obey, obey. What your pastor does, does, does. He says, hey, hey, hey. Because you think that when God tells me I will do it, guess who sent me here to talk to you? God has been talking to you. But you, you're just stubborn. You're just hardened in your heart. You don't listen. You don't, you don't follow. Because you're waiting for, it, that's what many people are doing. You know, the, the rich man that died and went to hell, you know what he told last, uh, Abraham, Father Abraham? He said, let me go and tell my brothers. He said, let them listen to the preachers. That's all they are going to get. When you get to heaven, God will say, didn't you hear? You say, God, when do you tell me? He said, Pastor King spent 20 years, something years of his life telling you. On my behalf, I sent him to you. But you are too hardened. Come many people expecting God to come and tell them personally? That's what, that's what I'm doing here. Oh, you think I'm, oh, this I'm talking, I'm talking to myself? No, I'm not. God sent me to you. Every time you disobey what I'm telling you, you are disobeying God. Oh, yeah, he sent me to you. I'm not just saying what I like from the blues. Okay, next week I wear white bedsheets. I think that will help you. Because like, some people don't get it. Every time you resist what has been preached, that's God's word to you. God is talking to you every day. He's not going to send more than this to you. Because you're waiting for thunder, brimstone, for light to be blinking. I can get my electric guy guys to blink the light. Guys, prepare next Sunday. We are doing Holy Ghost meeting. White bear sheet, Holy Ghost. So you fling the light for me. So that, because that's what some people need to, you know, home video is what they need. So you want to do that to them. So that you know it's God talking. It's God talking. It's God challenging you. So we say we're, we're doing a, a project, we're buying a new property. That's God. It's not my house. It's not my name that will be there. It's not my house. All of us will leave it and go. It's God's house. It's God calling for it. So when you don't respond, you are being hardened. Somebody in the group that we belong to, where we discussed it, the person said, David didn't even have this privilege of building God a house. And yet, God has given us the privilege to do it. Because David wanted to build God a house. God told him, no, I don't want you to do it. He says, well, David didn't have that chance. You, you have the chance, but you are hardened like rock. Fear. Gripping you. You don't want to stretch your faith for the things of God. No love, no emotion for the things of God. So you don't want to, but you stretch your faith for sure. Every time you make a deposit that will pay later, that's your faith. Oh, you don't know it's your faith? Because you don't have the full money, but you like the shoe. So you say, I'll pay, I'll drop 5K now. You don't have the remaining 5K, but you say, I will get it in the name of Jesus. That's exactly what you should be doing for kingdom expansion. Because that shoe, from the day you buy it, the value drops and keeps dropping forever. You must compare everything you do that will it matter in five years? The thing you are spending money on today, will it matter in five years? Okay, will it matter in 10 years? Okay, will it matter in 20 years? Okay, will it matter in eternity? The hair you are buying now, will it matter in eternity? Are you taking it to heaven? In 20 years, will it still have value? One of the people that made a pledge in the group we belong to, she said, ah, she's going to give the money she was planning to use for vacation. She was planning to go on vacation sometime this year. She's going to give it for the project. Vacation is great. After you go, in fact, from when you are there, it's useless. After you go, it's gone. It's gone. You need to go again next year. 
So that won't even make one year to be useless. How much more five years? How much more ten years? How much more eternity? Many of you are never thinking of eternity. You are smart enough to invest in your future in this life. You are not smart enough to invest in eternity. Are you really kidding me right now? Can I see people saying I'm buying shares for my future? Which one? Because your future here is short. Oh. The thing you are calling your future here is short compared to your real future. And I'm sorry that pastors, we don't tell you so much about eternity. So let me just tell you a bit of it. What you believe will determine where you spend eternity. How you behave will determine how you spend eternity. I'll say it again. <laughs> because it needs to sink in. Our belief determines where we spend eternity. Our behavior determines how we spend eternity. What does that mean? Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior qualifies you to go to heaven. The things you do while you are here as a Christian determines the quality of life you will live there. Why would you think in your mind that the person making sacrifices for God and you, that you barely can come to church, both of you when you get there, will you all be the same? You really, will God be just by doing that? I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. Let's say me. I, I give all my earnings. Let's say I give all my earnings in this life to kingdom work, to helping the poor, to kingdom work. Then you, you eat all your earnings. You think two of us will be the same in heaven. Then, 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 then why am I doing it? God will be unjust to do that. He's a just God. Ah, God believes in list. I will show you next Sunday. God like list. That's why there's something called the book of life. It's a list. I will show you. There, there are going to be two judgments in heaven. Next week, we'll look at this. Is. So if you don't know, there are two judgments in heaven. There's judgment for sinners. Then there's judgment for believers. I will show you in the Bible. Don't worry. Two judgments. So some of you laughing and roasting around. You think you will join me that have preached the gospel of 20 something years? You'll be on the same level? You'll be in BQ. You can't live on BQ on the earth and still live in BQ in heaven. Ask Lazarus. Lazarus did nothing for the kingdom. So he went to Abraham's bosom. Can't have his own house. Jesus said, I'm building mansions. But I put that will live in those BQ of the mansions. Because he did nothing. He just escaped to heaven. You added no value to the kingdom on the earth. I will show you this list. God is a record keeper. See, you can't give reward without record. Oh. You can't give reward without record. You, she's HR person now. How do you do HR? Don't you record people's appraiser? That's what that means the bonus and the other thing they give them. So you just float into heaven. You ate all your tithes. You ate all your giving. You ate everything. And you arrive, they'll clap for you. They say, move to one side. It's not you we're waiting for. Abraham, they are coming. David are coming. Pastor K, they are coming. Pastor the boy are coming. People that serve God are coming. Move! Think people sacrificing their destiny for the kingdom. They are the they are, you know, you, they, they, um, where is Bayawa? There's somebody that came for um, um, Camp David. She's a missionary. She's a white woman. Lives in America. She's resigned her job to be going to Africa to preach. So you and that person now, we line up. You that are located from Nigeria to Canada. To go and eat. She left the uh, Canada to come here to suffer. Then two of you will line up. They, you are equal. That, that will make God unjust. That will make God. And if it's true, then, what, then of what use of all the stress I'm stressing? If we're all going to be level, let me just lie down, close the church. If I will sell the land, I relocate. <laughs> are you here, somebody? Don't let nobody fool you, man. What you believe determines where you spend eternity. How you behave determines how. Some of you are going to envy us in heaven. I can tell you that for free. God has record. I will show you next week. Keeps record. He said if you give a glass of water in my name, the, the reward is not because it's a glass of water. It's because you are giving it in my name. So if you like, go and be dashing water, but that's not what I'm saying. It's kingdom water for kingdom purpose. DJ, bring the scripture now. It's in my name that makes it. So say if you give a glass of water in my name, say you will no wise lose your reward. So there's reward system. I will show you next week. There are two judgments on the last day. Two. One for sinners. To tell them, my brother, you are sentenced to life in imprisonment, in hell. Then believers, line up. Show me your works. Show me your works. Your works will be tested by fire. I will show you this in next week. Oh, don't miss next week. Oh. Look at this. And whosoever shall give a drink unto one of these little ones, a cup of cold water, only what? In my name. Of, in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise... This Jesus. See, there's a reward system. You eat all your tithe, you eat all your following all the people talking rubbish. They, they will all, when they all line up, they will be shaking. 
You want to be the same as Abraham that gave up his son? You are his mate? As what? David, even when God told David, don't build the temple, you know what David did? He, he gave his whole offering in her head. He said, you will build one day. Take my pledge now. Whenever you build, add it because I must be part of it. So you and that person now, that you, you are hiding your own. They won't call you to build your own. Can you be on the same level? I want to challenge us to give. I want us to receive all the giving for that building project to end it today. That's what I want to do. Because the money is in this house. You need to go and sell the wig you bought. Go and return it. Collect the deposits you have. One guy went to preach in one village. He thought they didn't have money. But they needed to build something, a church in the village. But she knows that most of the people were villagers. They didn't even have money. So she told them, don't stress yourself. Oh, you know, give what you can. But if you don't have, it's okay. One woman came. One very poor woman came. Brought money. Plenty of money in gold. Ah, the man said, you are a poor person in the village. How do you get this money? She said she sold herself as a slave. To collect money. To give to kingdom. You and that person now, we line up with your heavy wig. That is your whole investment in this life. You think two of you will be on the same level in heaven? That would be unfair. That would make God a very unjust God. If we're all going the same level. What you believe determines where you spend eternity. How you behave determines how you spend eternity. We're all not going to be. He said there will be stars on some people. Some people, they'll be Korofo. You know Korofo? Nothing. Even name tag, they don't have. 